So this uh, third way, what we call in the book, the pathway to media land, um, the combining of reading and media, the combining of the new literacy skills, both the foundational ones of listening, speaking, reading, and writing, to include the new ones, which have to do with digital literacy, information literacy, the ability to participate from a rather early age, four or five, in the digital economy that surrounds everyone. So the way in which we can get to Radio Land is better understanding that there's a big difference between parking your three-year-old in front of an app or in front of the tube for an hour or two without any adult guidance and perhaps using something like a video chat to connect a, a wise elder or a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or a parent who's you know, traveling to a child who actually can engage directly through the magic of, let's say, a video chat you know, window with their loved ones. There's a big difference between reading a book, that's a print book, and you know, work, you know, that, 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 that's an e-book that takes the elements of print and puts them on screen and animates it in a way that a child can interact with highlighted text and just putting a child in an unsupervised you know, condition where there's no adults who are monitoring what's going on. So, of course, all the habits that we have um, as parents, as, as educators, are being disrupted by this, and we need to be much more conscious, and we need more professional support and training. And what we discuss in the book is the need for media mentors, because we can't use these technologies. One of the big issues that I have with the technologies and why there is a threat from technologies you know, today is that they're engaging and they're, you know, um, um, uh, they can be a time dump if they are not connected to educational curriculum, if they're not connected to the research science, if they're not connected in some way in, uh, around how we know how young and vulnerable minds um, and, and, and brains grow. So the book sort of delves into all of these topics, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, uh, in I think a nuanced way, but in a direct, you know, in a, in a direct way. Early childhood educators should not be worried about technology. They need to create and sort of need to get their heads into how the technologies actually can be useful in allowing them to have children get personalized attention. There's game engines and adaptive learning technologies that are gaining momentum now that will allow an educator and a parent to really monitor and support their child's efforts to master the dinosaurs or understand how to learn how to read. Um, there's also the, um, you know, the new capabilities of allowing a parent to check in on how a child is doing through these different kinds of um, uh, educational softwares that will inform multiple generations at the same time. So there's uh, voice recognition softwares that are becoming much more powerful. So we need to keep it all in perspective and in balance. Uh, as I said before, technology is not a magic, magic elixir, but we also have to get our heads out of the sand in the sense that we cannot create truly technology-free zones for children because the ubiquitous technology environments in which they're watching their parents grow up in or their parents parent in is you know, something that young minds notice.